Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a very nice homemade equation with complex numbers. We have z ln z equals negative square root of 2 times pi over 8 plus i times the square root of 2 times pi over 8. And we're going to be solving for z values. How many solutions are there? Are there any solutions? How can we solve it? We're going to try to answer those questions in this video. And this is kind of like an interesting problem because if you don't do it correctly, uh, you could probably get into lots of trouble. But first of all, I want to show you something. Whenever you have something like z multiplied by ln z or z times e to the power z, that is usually calling for a special function. And I'm, pre I'm pretty sure most of you are familiar with that function. That is called, anyways, we'll talk about it. So here's how it works. We have a function called w that takes a value like t e to the t as input and then outputs the t. So it's also called the product log, which is also known as Lambert's w function. You can just call it w. And I know some people don't like w. I don't know why, because I was thinking the same way actually a while ago. Like, OK, this is like a calculator, right? There's no point in yes. Uh, sometimes that's the case, but, you know, in some cases we have to use calculators. I mean, engineers use calculators, some people uh, like carpenters, you know, people who work in construction. You all, you have to use some tools sometimes, and that's okay. But we're going to try to make it a little nicer here because this is a really nice problem. I'm not saying it's nice because I wrote the problem, and anyone can write this problem, by the way. I'm not trying to brag here. Just saying that uh, I thought about the idea and anyone can th think about this idea. And you can probably come up with nicer problems. And if you ever do, please let us know so we can make a video on this channel. Because this channel is all about complex numbers and I'm always looking for ideas and problems because I can only do complex problems, complex number problems, and I publish a video every day. So I need 365 videos or ideas per year. Anyways, I have another channel called CyberMath, which focuses on algebra and number theory problems, maybe a little bit of geometry here and there. I'm thinking about a geometry problem. I just wasn't able to uh, draw it uh, because I use Desmos and I kind of need to construct it. So that's the difficulty. I know some people use GeoGebra, which they say is easier. Anyways, that's a different topic. Now, here, so how do you apply it to ZL and Z though, right? I'll, I'll tell you about it. But first, we're going to take this expression and turn it into the following. First, I can definitely use a calculator for this, right? What is a calculator like Wolfram Alpha would be a good one. Uh, Desmos, I'm not sure how Desmos interprets Lambert's W. Um, there is probably a way to do it. I think so. Yeah, you can do it with the inverse function because I was able to graph it. Anyways, uh, by the way, if you wanted to graph it, uh, you can just graph this because that'll be the inverse of y equals x e to the x. Make sense? You get the idea, but you gotta be careful about the variables in which order they appear. So I was just talking about like, okay, I see the pattern t e to the t, but it's not like that. Yes and no, because you can turn it into something like this. Consider the following identity. Z can be written as e to the power ln z. And guess what? That does the trick. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna replace z with e to the ln z, so our expression becomes ln z multiplied by e to the power ln z. Beautiful, right? And then on the right-hand side, we're going to have the same expression. This is kind of like the calculator brute force approach, which uses some extra tools, right? So at this point, if you go ahead, and I probably need always need that, a little space here. Now we're going to go ahead and insert our function. Now, as you probably know that if x sub 1 equals x sub 2, then when you apply a function like f, f of x sub 1 is always going to equal this. This is the well-definedness property, okay, if a function is well-defined, and it should be. Now, we can go ahead and insert w, which is okay. You can't always do the opposite because that would in, um, require the uh, injectivity of the function, which is not always the case. For example, y equals x squared is not one-to-one -one or injective. So when you apply it, you're going to think of this as your tea or coffee. If you like coffee better, you can also look at it that way. But I like tea uh, because coffee has a lot of caffeine and kind of, I don't know, hard, makes it harder to sleep. So tea to the tea, 
I should be getting a T as an output. So which means from here I can get L and Z. Isn't that cool? L and Z is equal to this. So here's the hard part, which you need a tool for. What is the W of this gigantic complex number? And also, one thing to keep in mind here is you're not going to use the real branch. You're going to have to use a complex branch of the Lambert's W function if I'm using the terminology correctly. If not, I'm pretty sure somebody will correct it. I don't even need to say that, right? So anyways, just plug it into Wolfram Alpha, W, Wolfram Alpha, W, A, and then you'll get an answer. I'm going to leave it incomplete because I don't know what it is. I can't do it. I'm not Wolfram Alpha. I'm Cybermath. Or did I say Cybermath? Wait a minute. I'm not Cybermath at this point. I'm both, but uh, let me just say I'm A plus B I, okay? <laughs> okay, nice to meet you. Anyways, so let's go ahead and take a look at the second approach, which is definitely much nicer. So here's what we have. Z ln Z equals, let me copy that, negative root two pi over eight plus I times root two pi over eight. Have you noticed that the real part and the imaginary part on the right-hand side are equal, almost equal, or their absolute values are equal? So that tells me we have something like a minus ai or negative a plus ai, which means it's the angle, the argument, tangent, okay? What am I talking about? Too many things. Uh, if you look at the tangent of theta, the argument of the right-hand side, you should get negative 1, which tells you we're dealing with multiples of pi over 4. Uh-oh, I have a pi over 8 in the equation. So that should be a good sign that you should do something about it. So one of the things that I thought about was, okay, maybe I should take out uh, root 2 and then I, I can end up with pi over 8 inside. But that's not a good thing. You don't want to have the pi over 8 because think about it. If I took out a root 2 and even a negative root 2, you would end up with pi over 8 minus i times pi over 8. Then how do you write this number? Like this is, how do you turn into polar form? You're going to have to deal with like something like uh, e to the power i times the angle. Um, it's not going to look that good, is it? I don't know. Maybe it will. So anyways, let's go ahead and do it differently. I don't think this is a good way to do it. I could be wrong. Uh, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and factor out a pi over 4. That'll give me negative root 2 over 2 plus i times root 2 over 2. Notice that the real and imaginary parts are opposites still. Okay, it wouldn't change. And then we're going to do our hocus pocus. <laughs> what is the hocus pocus? The math of magic. I'm going to write this negative one as i squared because that really does the trick. You'll see in a little bit. That's actually triggered by the presence of pi over 4 in our equation, right? Of course, it's a trial and error. I already know the solution, so it's easy for me to say. But now we have i squared and i, so we can take out i and write this as i pi over 4 on the outside, which is nicer than having a pi over 4. And inside, we're going to have root 2 over 2. Obviously, these two are going to switch around because this will be now the real part after taking out the i plus i times root 2 over 2. And this is super nice. You know why? Because this is cosine pi over 4 and this is sine pi over 4. Of course, the angles need to be the same. Therefore, this can be written in standard form like that. But in Euler's form, how do you write it? You write it as Remember, cosine theta plus i sine theta can be written as e to the i theta. So this would be e to the power i times pi over 4. Beautiful. And of course, there is an i pi over 4 in the front. Now we can go ahead and bring in the left-hand side because we didn't really need it all this time. Z, ln, z. And do the ln trick one more time. This can be written as ln, z times e to the power ln, z. And compare it to i pi over 4 times e to the power i times pi over 4. Notice that this should be your ln z. This should be i pi over 4, which is the same as ln z. Therefore, we have ln z equals i pi over 4, or you can write this as e to the ln z equals e to the power i pi over 4, because this is going to turn into z, which is going to give you the answer right away. So it's kind of a little faster to get to the answer z equals this. But what is e to the power i pi over 4? You can leave it like this, or write it as cosine pi over 4, again, plus i times sine pi over 4 using the conversion thanks to Euler, and that can be written as root 2 over 2 plus i times root 2 over 2. Are there any other solutions? What do you think? I only found one. If you can find other solutions, please let us know. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.